of emotions at this point in the series but it, it's particularly strange because obviously it's about to start going out so it feels like the beginning of something but also you know yeah. the fifth and final series the end at the same time so yeah it's a bit of a bit of a strange um melancholia but um, yeah. always excited to see them go out yeah. it's also good simon um for people to know when to end a series but i can imagine the people are going to be, 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 be be bereft because I think what the, the series pulls off is it appeals right across the demographics. It's 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 absolutely extraordinary. Yeah, I, I was out um, with three different sets of people across sort of a twenty four hour period last week, and and they aged between sort of eighteen and sixty, and a family somewhere in between as well. <laughs> and all of them were just saying it's their favourite show. So. Yeah, it's it just uh, it hits that sweet spot, doesn't it, where yeah. it just appeals to everyone. That's quite something to pull off. It's, it's the holy grail for, for television makers, that's for sure. And Simon, am I right in thinking you came to go in Series 4? So I wonder you know, what it's like getting on board with something that's so established at that point. Um, it was an absolute joy. It's, uh, you know, it's a show that has its um, quite unique complications in terms of making it, but also the certain things that make it a lot easier... Um, you know, having having the writers playing the main characters is is a boon for a director, because um, I've got you know I've always got them on hand. There's always a big group of them who, who we can discuss ideas with and stuff. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's the the two directors who did the previous series both told me it was the hardest job that they'd ever done, which <laughs> really put the fear in me before I started <laughs> I series four. But um, but it went smoothly and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. So Lawrence, uh, you wrote the first episode of the new series as well as other episodes. So can you tell our listeners where we find the characters at the start of series five? Yeah, well, I mean, I think we we ended the last series in a sort of state of chaos with their their guest house destroyed by a fire. So they kind of their their business plan that they'd come up with has fallen apart and they need a brand new one to avoid financial ruin. And they hit upon one which kind of would probably mean the end of the estate as we know it, which goes down about as well as you'd expect with the ghosts and means forming an an alliance with their neighbour who's kind of the worst human being in the world. And then Mike's ambitions for their new plan become a little bit overreaching, which causes its own problems. So, yeah, yeah, there's all sorts of um, wrinkles still to come. We may be nearing the end, but it's not a smooth journey. (laughs) Um, Good. We're delighted to hear that. We wouldn't want it to be a smooth journey. And, um, yeah, I'm wondering for you, Lawrence, um, for people who haven't seen it, tell us about your two characters. Yeah, I mean, I suppose they are quite unalike. Um, Yeah, I mean, we talked really early on when we were developing the show about it seemed weird to us that ghosts, when people say they've seen a ghost, they're sort of the earliest you ever hear about is one from a Tudor times going up to sort of Second World War. And you never hear someone saying, oh, we saw a ghost from this guy from like 1993. So we said we should have one of those and we should have a caveman. And when we said that idea, I didn't realise how much makeup I was committing myself to for the next five years so yeah robin is sort of ten thousand years old and then um humphrey is uh yeah the kind of classic tudor uh headless ghost that you always hear about in these ghost stories but uh the circumstances of his demise aren't exactly what you were expecting they yeah. were more it was yeah. more of an unfortunate accident <laughs> yeah and and simon it's doing well internationally i'm not surprised by any of this because for the reasons we've just spoken about about the, you know how it appeals right across the age groups what but tell us about the states and the reaction there um yeah i mean as far as i understand it it's the biggest network comedy in america this wow. is this is the american remake of it um but because of the writer strikes there's a gap mm. in their schedule so they're showing the uk version all, I think the first four series of the UK version are, are about to go yeah. out in the States. That's quite interesting. I mean, it's, a sh- it's awful, but we, 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 we're absolutely on the side of the writers with the writer strike. But actually, that's that's been a wee benefit for you guys, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's it's such a tricky one, obviously. I think that I deal was something that was done um, ahead of the, the strikes happening. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it's sort of shuffled around the schedule. I mean, thankfully now it looks like some at least of those issues have been resolved and hopefully um, production can get up and running on yes. the, uh, the US version again soon. Because, yeah, I mean, that's just been such an incredible 
hit over there wow. you know you, you always hope if something goes through that really tricky process of reimagining something in another country it so yeah. rarely works and it's you know it's come out it's come out so well it's it would be great to sort of see them up and able to make some more you can understand in a way why it would be a hit there though can't you because it's tapping into kind of distinctly traditional british life you know every single aspect of it um but at the same time it's very very funny yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the sort of joys of it because it is very quintessentially British, but it means that there's the scope there to take versions of it which then take um, take those kind of character dynamics but put them across um, characters which are specific to other countries, other territories. So the American ghosts, when you look at it, feels very similar to ours in a lot of ways, but yeah. those the, the characters that they've got are from, you know, American history. Yes. And so ah. yeah, they've all got their, you know, <laughs> distinct slants on it and right. you know there's there's various other um options there's various other um, productions that are in the works so there might we might get to see other ghosts from around the world off oh, they've got less history to pull pull on though it wouldn't be the same it well yeah i mean that that was what was really <laughs> interesting you know with the exception of uh, of, of thorfinn their kind of uh, viking settler you know yes. most of their ghosts are from the last 200 years whereas we've got <laughs> a fair bit more than that to play with it's so funny and um, simon you've worked on some you know, really high profile shows in your time motherland there she goes with david tennant and jessica hines two doors down bob servant <laughs> That's a really interesting variety of work. Is that part of the fun or the beauty? I mean, I know it's challenging as well, but to be a director working on so many different types of show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've found my my area is um, comedy, um, but every job I start, it's it's like you're starting over afresh because you don't know. You know, every job is completely different. You don't know what to expect. The tone is different. The people you're working with is different. So. It keeps it. It keeps interesting. Keeps me on my toes and stops me getting bored. And we can tell you're a Scot. So how did you get? How did you get into the crazy world of show business? <laughs> so I studied at Napier University. I did ah. the film and television course there, and I started making short films, and uh, a feature film. And then that led to TV. I was doing kids telly for a long time. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of kids telly happens in Scotland. Yeah. So um, that kept me busy for a long time, and I just really sort of nailed my craft while I was doing that. And um, yeah, moved into more grown up comedy and started out in Scotland, but recently more and more of the work's been taking me down south. But um, yeah, I'm hoping to get back here soon. Yeah. And uh, good, I'm glad to hear it. And uh, Lawrence, <laughs> tell us about this. How do, you, how do you decide when to end a series like this? What, what kind of, you know, is it a group decision? Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a number of things. It would have been, it's such fun to make, it would have been really tempting to just do it forever. Yeah. But, you know, inevitably, the, the you know, as we're sort of reading about today with Upstart Crow, at some point, <laughs> the trajectory of all television shows, regardless of how great they are, you know, and that's a good example, yeah. um, that at some point it stops. And it was really tempting for us to be sort of in control of that narrative and be able to give a proper definitive ending for all of the characters. Yeah. Plus, we'd you know, got to the point where we would have told all of the backstories, how all the ghosts came to be in the house. And, um, you know, we were time as well. You know, it takes between the writing and shooting and post-production on the show, you know, it's sort of a rolling year. So it's yes. been most of our years for the last five years. And wow. so it was a chance to, you know, we've just done a, a ghost's book, which is something mm -hmm. we've been trying to do since series two, but it was only now that we were able to have the time to sort of complete that. Yeah. And, um, uh, Simon, that you, I think you've done lots of flashbacks for lots of the characters, sometimes maybe showing how they, they, they met their end. Oh, it's not done spoilers. Um, tell us whose past you're exploring in, in this series, in the new series. Uh, am I allowed to say Larry? Um, I mean, you could probably <laughs> allude to one or two. I don't think that'd be a problem. I'm, I'm going to let Larry say what he thinks is appropriate to say. I'm I was not calling you by anything. your posh name, Lawrence. So you're Larry, okay? <laughs> oh no, Eva's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, there's a couple. It, it won't come as an entire surprise. There are a couple whose um, the, the, the reasons that. Uh, that they brought them to the house haven't been entirely explored mm -hmm. and we certainly wouldn't want people to be you know leaving the series after five years without having some of their questions answered so yeah. i think there will be hopefully there's still a number of surprises to come but there should be some um, some questions that we've been asked a lot by fans should be yeah. answered over the next few weeks and of course the living characters alison and mike they have some pretty big changes to get to grips with presumably Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's all, we love to throw as many curveballs as we possibly can at all the characters, but not least those two. Apart from anything else, you know, just as performers, they're always so funny when we throw something quite ridiculous at them. So, uh, yeah. yeah, we like to keep those kind of big life changes coming.
Well, I tell you, the series has been an absolute joy and it is that rare beast, isn't it? Something that absolutely, as we've said, um, appeals right across the age groups. Um, thank you both so much uh, for joining us. Lawrence Ricard or Larry, uh, and Simon Hines, thank you so much. Uh, Ghost's fifth and final series starts at 8.30pm on Friday on BBC One and the whole series will be available on iPlayer 